Hi, welcome back to the Guzzy Sound channel. I'm making this video in response to a question I was asked about the tech release envelope circuit I showed in, in my Project 9 modular analog synth series. Um, I'm no electronics expert, so I don't tend to go into giving detailed designs and how circuits work. Um, and I have no claim to this circuit whatsoever. All credit goes to Nathan Ramsden, aka Synth Nerd. If you're into analog synths and particularly the DIY scene in any way at all, then go check out his website. I've put the link in the description below. There's some really useful, really informative stuff there. Well worth a look. So yeah, go check it out. So all credit to Nathan that we've got this attack release envelope. But what I will attempt to do is with the basic knowledge that I've got, I will try and give a, a relatively straightforward, hopefully simple overview of how the circuit's put together and what each bit of the circuit does. And hopefully it'll give you a bit more of an understanding as to uh, how an envelope generator generates the envelope. So here is the total circuit. It's a relatively simple circuit based around a dual op amp. The circuit can be split into three stages. So if we start with the input stage, then this is basically a, a comparator circuit. So you've got a, a an input, which will be a particular trigger voltage going into the positive or non-inverting input on the op amp. And then we have what is a reference voltage, which is provided by um, a potential divider between the uh, positive rail and ground. And this provides a, a reference voltage, which is going to be relatively low. And the way the comparator works, I, I looked at this in, in a previous video on uh, the passive-ish, drum-ish, kick drum circuit I built. But basically what happens is that when the input voltage rises above the reference voltage, then the output from the op amp goes high around about the supply rail. When the input voltage drops below the reference voltage, the output goes low, in the case of this one, it will go back down to ground. So basically you get a, a conditioned gate output at around about the supply rail voltage. If we jump to the other end of the circuit and look at the output, this is the other part of the uh, dual op amp and it is simply a buffer circuit. Um, you've got the output is connected back into the negative input and what basically happens is that the op amp tries to balance the uh, output to the inputs and so because it's just a, a straight connection there is no gain control or, or bias on the feedback um, so it's what's known as a unity gain amplifier so basically what goes in is the same size as what comes out. Essentially, it's just stabilizing and conditioning the, the output. So that just leaves the bit in the middle, which is actually a filter circuit, which provides the actual envelope shapes. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. On the input side, on the, on the left hand side, um, you will see that there is a 560 ohm resistor. Um, according to uh, what's in Nathan's uh, information, that sets the minimum time for the attack and release phases. Um, so I suppose you could play around with that if you wanted to alter that. Then if we look at the other end, there there is a capacitor there. Now what does a capacitor do? Well very simple terms, it charges up 
and given the right conditions it will then discharge but it will take a finite time to charge and discharge so we can actually have a bit of control over the period over which a voltage rises and a voltage falls Ooh, starting to sound a bit like an envelope already if you remember the slopes from the graphs in the uh, previous video um, what do we need when we want to kind of take a voltage from a low to a high or a high to a low we need a flow of current in order for that voltage to change we can then control the rate of flow of current by putting a resistance in that flow a bit like a valve on a on a tap um, and what we have here we have two potentiometers and those potentiometers will provide a variable resistance to the flow of the current when the capacitor is either charging or discharging so by altering that resistance we can alter the rate of flow so we can alter the slope of the attack and release state phases on the envelope why have we got two diodes in there well what the diodes do diodes control the direction of flow so to ensure that the attack potentiometer only affects the attack phase then the diode is feeding into that one and to ensure that the release potentiometer only affects the release phase then the diode is pointing in the opposite direction because we wanted to discharge so then you plug the whole circuit together and you have a nice condition gate input which is then used to uh, trigger the charge and discharge on, on our uh, RC circuit which is essentially a bit of a filtered kind of circuit and then we take the output from that circuit and we uh, kind of tidy it up a little bit with a buffer and send it back on its way to provide a control voltage to shape whatever you want to shape whether it's a Vactrol, VCA, whether it's it's affecting a, a filter sweep, whatever you want to use the envelope for. So there we go. Well, hopefully it's just been a bit of a, a narrative video, um, but I hope that my narrative has given you a little bit of a better understanding of um, how an envelope circuit works. Well, at least a simple attack release envelope circuit works. But hey. It's one thing understanding how it works, all very interesting, but it's a hell of a lot more fun playing around with what it does. So go on, have a go, build your own.